This is a Tektronix TX3 True RMS multimeter. It does True RMS AC plus DC. It also does 4 to 20 milliamp current loop measurements. It's made in the USA. It runs on two AA batteries. There's an interesting function. You can uh, check the battery voltage directly from the uh, front of the meter on power up. Press soft key number four on power up and you can measure the, uh, the internal battery voltage. Uh, it gives a low voltage indication when the internal batteries are at two volts. It cuts out at 1.5 volts so it's really squeezing uh, just about every bit of life out of those batteries. Now they like to talk ruggedness uh, in, in uh, advertising hype, but that's a relative uh, concept and uh, in my opinion anything with a LCD panel this large uh, by default is not going to be uh, very rugged and in fact uh, I've seen a couple of these on eBay that actually had the uh, LCD display broken. So uh, It does have a variety of setup menus available through the soft keys here. You can set the power off the time you can set the uh, the time during which the uh, the backlight stays on you can turn the uh, the beep on and off you can uh, determine whether it triggers on a positive or negative edge and one thing I'd like to demonstrate on this meter is the extremely fast continuity check uh, we've seen some reviews on fluke meters and others that show a, a faster or slower continuity check this is absolutely the fastest I've seen it's faster even than the fluke 87 It is latched. There's no scratchy stuff there. It's just the fastest I have seen. And it's actually loud enough for me to hear, so that, that's very handy. Uh, the DC accuracy is uh, rated at uh, 0 0.05% plus one count. Uh, now the auto hold uh, has two modes. Uh, one is a simple display freeze like you see on cheaper multimeters. Uh, the other is a traditional auto hold similar to the Fluke. Okay, and here's the inside of your meter. Uh, the quality of the input jacks uh, appears to be good. The uh, input protection uh, appears to be pretty basic. I'm not sure what these are. They may be spark gaps, for example. Here we have a .005 ohm current shunt, a couple of MOSFETs, uh, possibly part of the switching regulator, although I do not see a transformer for that. Here's a couple of optocouplers and a relay. I plan to check the current draw on that relay here pretty quick. Uh, here's your your PC interface components, your transmit and receive, photo transistors, etc. Uh, here we have the, uh, the main processor, that's an NEC processor. And this looks like some uh, possibly some power regulation uh, going on in here. And here you can see the uh, the inside of the meter, uh, there's some uh, there's a white plastic shield, of course, over everything. All of your uh, soft key functions are actuated like remote control buttons. The uh, the main function switch is uh, deposited carbon material, which uh, worried me when I first saw it, but I stopped and thought about it, and I think, well, uh, I deal with a lot of audio equipment that has potentiometers and so forth that are 40 and 50 years old and still work fine, so. I suppose if it's done right, it's nothing to worry about. It only has three input jacks. Uh, one is a 10 amp input, the other is for um, volts, ohms, capacitance, etc. The 10 amp jack is also used for microamps. I'm not exactly sure how they accomplish that feat. Now one thing I'd like to mention regarding this is that uh, while LCDs are usually critical as to viewing angle, this is much more so when the backlight is on if it's tilted you virtually lose the sight of the digits altogether and if you're looking at it straight on or from some other angles the contrast is really excellent but if you get up above it looking down look out because you're not really going to see anything by the way it uses six conventional LEDs uh, for backlighting and the current drain with the backlight on is about 150 milliamps uh, obviously that's using conventional LEDs which is not surprising since this model goes back to about 1999. 
Okay, now here's something I just discovered in the course of trying to uh, to find uh, the current drain when, when the little relays are activated. Uh, right now we're running about 18 milliamps or so in, in normal operation. But let's set it to uh, peak min-max. Acquire some readings. And peak. Strange enough, uh, occasionally it, it, it hits peaks in the 66 milliamp range. I don't know why. Maybe when it's you know, charging or refreshing, uh, gosh knows what, but, uh, uh, not battery charging, but I mean, but, uh, uh, you know, refreshing its DC to DC converter voltage levels or something like that, I, I don't know. But, uh, uh, but watch what happens. The relay only activates, uh, briefly, by the way, uh, in between changing modes, and so I'm not sure what that's about, but you see it gets up just briefly as high as about 90 milliamps. interesting. Uh, battery life is claimed at, at 100 hours continuous off the AA batteries which isn't too bad you know really for a, for a meter of this caliber. Okay now there are a number of soft key menu functions um, when you first turn it on it defaults to AC voltage readings but you switch it to DC that way uh, you have as I say your various uh, soft key functions and they also give you uh, various power up functions with the soft keys as well and you can change some of your defaults like you can change the uh, duration of the backlighting for example uh, or the auto power off time. Uh, the, the meter feels pretty rugged overall uh, however uh, I'm very concerned about the size of the uh, LCD panel I've seen a couple of these for sale on eBay and uh, they both have broken <laughs> LCD uh, assemblies which is uh, not too surprising. Um, it does come with a nice, uh, similar to fluke style uh, shoe holster here. And one thing I really like about it is that on the on the tilting bale, excuse me, you have this little rubber thingy that lets you set it wherever you like. For example, uh, on the back of a plasma TV, and it, it'll hold it very securely. Uh, setting it on, on the back edge of something there uh, and supporting its own weight. I like that a lot. I wish Fluke had it. Of course they have magnetic hangers which this doesn't have. Uh, there is a, a RS-232 interface which I do not have and uh, uh, matching software but as the unit's uh, 10 to 12 years old those may not be available anymore anyway. Uh, the accuracy is, is comparable to the Fluke uh, uh, I've, I've taken a number of uh, voltage readings and so forth and it's uh, very very accurate. And one thing about this meter that I've noticed is that using the auto hold function it takes about twice as long as the Fluke 87 to acquire a, a voltage reading. And these are, these are uh, 3.6 volt batteries by the way. Just takes way too long to acquire a reading in the auto hold mode, and even longer when it has to uh, auto range, I suppose. And like most modern meters, it does frequency, capacitance, and temperature. And I really like the way you access the batteries through the, the bottom end of the meter. You just have a, a little cover to remove, and the AA batteries are right there. And there's a little uh, shorting bar in there to qualify the battery connection so the meter uh, cannot run without the cover in place. And that just about does it for the Tektronix TX3 digital multimeter. It's a fine meter. I'm proud to own it and I'll be proud to use it. Thank you.